T. Clark here, and this video is going to go over the AP Computer Science A 2024 FRQ number 4A. So in 4, we have a path through a two-dimensional array of integers where the path is based on values of elements in the array. Um, when an element of the 2D array is accessed, the first index is used to specify row and uh, second is column. So a normal row, uh, row column 2D array like normal. And then we also have a location class representing a row and column. Um, we're going to use, so we probably have to use a constructor and the accessors somehow in this problem. So skipping ahead to the next uh, page, we have a grid path class, which contains that 2D array grid. Um, it's called grid, so I'd probably circle that. And we have some methods that determine a path through the array. So we're going to write two methods. So first thing I see is I see part A right here, and I have my method header, so I'm going to write that out. So I have it over here. Actually, I don't want this return null anymore because I'm working on it finally. Um, now it's just a placeholder so it wouldn't crash. Um, so I'd write public, location, you get next lock, int row, int column. So that's what I start with. And then I don't even look at part B. I look at uh, the header, method header above it. And I see, okay, so it returns location at row and column. And uh, preconditions are row is a valid index. Column is a valid index, okay. And... So that means we don't have to worry about negatives or if it's out of bounds. But also this last one says row and call do not specify the element in the last row and the last column. So the last row and the last column. So if I scroll down, that means it's not going to be 4-4. Four, four. It's not going to be this bottom right element. Um, whatever this element is, the row and column in my, um, because of my precondition is here, it'll be guaranteed to not be this spot. So I already skipped ahead to the three. So what does three say? Three says, uh, let me see this. write the get next lock method, which returns a location. So I did probably do new location um, and use a the constructor there um, to the smaller of two neighbors. Okay, so smaller of two neighbors. So what neighbors? So the two neighbors are uh, the element below and the element to the right. So um, if both neighbors exist, the location with the smaller is returned. And they're always going to have different values. Okay, so they won't be equal. I don't have to worry about equal. It's always going to be, they're all different. Um, if only one neighbor exists, the location of the existing neighbor is returned. Okay, so let's look at this. So we have all these values. What's my examples down here say? Um, get next location, uh, zero, zero. So if zero, zero, so I'm right here at this, at this 12. I don't need the 12 right now, um, but I'm going to look at the one below it and the one to the right of it. So then I say, it says, the explanation says, returns the neighbor to the right. So in this case, it'll return this 3 because 3 is less than that 11. So it'll return that 3. Well, actually, it won't return the 3. It'll return um, 0, 1, that location, at, at the location object 0, 1. Okay, then if I look at lock, get next lock 1, 3. So 1, 3 is this, we're at this 14. I look below it and to the right of it. And I'm looking at this 15 and 16. And it looks like it's the 15 because that's smaller. So it'll return to 3 location, location 2, 3, where that 15 is. Okay, let's go through the last two. So 2, 4, 2, 4. Oh, that's all the way to the right. So there's nothing to the right of the most right. So I automatically return the one below it. So that would be 3, 4. Yeah, 3, 4, where that one is. And then if I'm at the bottom, 4, 3, I'm at this 25 um, spot. I would, there's nothing below it, so I automatically return the one to the right of it. Um, yes, yeah, so and then I will never be at this 4-4, four, four, so you don't have to worry about that, because it takes, the precondition takes care of that. Okay, yeah, it says right here, it will never be called on row and column 4, um, violate the precondition. And then next page, this is a normal uh, getting started page. So I'm going to keep this open, I'm going to code it. So I'm going to do the two, ex uh, two um, exceptions first. What if I'm on the bottom? So how do I do the bottom? So if the bottom is the row equals, okay, so then the bottom is grid um, dot length minus one. Oh, I don't need a semicolon. I need to enter, bracket enter. Okay, so then, uh, so again, there's five. So if I have five, one, two, three, four, five, right? There's five rows. The last one is not at five. It's at the length minus one. So it's at row four. So if I'm at row four, I need to return the new location at um, the same row, 
but the column to the right. So column plus one. So, so if I'm at the bottom, I'm going to the column plus one. Okay, so similarly, if the column I'm at is all the way to the right, so column equals grid, since I'm in columns, I need bracket zero uh, length minus one. So if I'm all the way to the right, the maximum column, in this case, the one, um, then I want the one below it. So how to do the one below it? Enter bracket enter, return new location, as below is row plus one, and then column is the same column because I'm already at the rightmost. So it's the one below it. So it looks like we're going to do the same thing depending on the the, um, the which one is minimum uh, of the check. So I'm going to check that first. So if um, if I'm if at any place else, so if I'm maybe at one one or zero zero, I'm going to check that item. So if I'm going to check the item below it. So row, uh, grid, I'm checking the number at the grid and the row below it and the same column. So if that number, so if I was at 0, 0, uh, row plus 1 would be 11 and it would still be 0, the first uh, column. I'm seeing if this is less than the one to the right of it. So the one to the right would be the same row and then one to the right, one column to the right. So I'm saying if the one below it is less than the one to the right, then you return the one below it. All right, I want the smallest one. So I still need to do a new location at the one I was just saying below. I said below like 10 times now. Um, and you can put spaces at the plus one. Um, you don't have to. When you write it out, hopefully you write nice and neat. Oh, you do have to do the plus one, though. I messed that up. Um, so row one, comma, column. I'm going to double check this, make sure I'm doing this right. So I'm going to look at my location. So I'm going to scroll back a couple pages and say, okay, how do I do my location? I need row, then column. Okay, good. So row, then column. I'm going to finish this up then. Okay, so I think that's it. New location at the row below it. If it's smaller, yeah. And then at the very end, I can do an else. I don't need to do an else since I'm doing returns. I'll just return the last possible one from my list of what to do. So if it's not the one below it, it has to be the one to the same row, but to the right of it. And there we go. I think that should be it for the get next lock. Let me run it, see if my grader works, see if this... <sighs> oh, I want to run main then. Okay, so I have my main. I'm going to ignore all the files. I'm going to go back to my grid path because that's what we're on. It looks like everything looks like it's working. Yep. Okay, and I just have this tester to make sure everything. So zero, zero should be zero, one, should be two, three, yep, should be three, four, yep, and then it should be four, four. Okay, got it. So have a good day.